I have to ask this question. Mm -hmm. Sorry, we will never pass <laughs> the. But anyway, Frederic, mm -hmm. is Elsa conscious? No. <laughs> Why? Uh, because she she is just following the software and she doesn't depends of course how i program it i think in the future we might have robots that have a consciousness mm -hmm. but for today it's just uh, like a tool following the rules and she she is aware of the environment mm -hmm. but not conscious uh, she she knows about the environment she she can see humans she can see uh, goal and opponents and so on And that's awareness, but not consciousness. What's the difference in consciousness and awareness? Because I think you, you, this is a brilliant, good example. Mm. And, you're, and, and to be clear here, but how do you, what is consciousness in, you know, to, to be conscious and not aware, what's the difference? It's a bit hard or tricky question. Uh, I, I would say that consciousness is about under- able to Shut it down. <laughs> <laughs> so. She's uh, conscious about the low battery she's level. She's actually conscious <laughs> about her battery level. I would argue, she's not, or is she aware? <laughs> uh, so I would say that it's an understanding on, on the environment, understanding what is a human, what is mm. uh, opponent or goal and so on. But she is not aware. Well, she, she, not. She, she is aware of the goal, but she doesn't understand what it is. The, mm. the like semantics and mm. ontology and she can't uh, connect it to other stuff in the in the world only in the game she she mm. she is uh, very confined uh, reasoning space there yeah But can you can, can you have to, a confined consciousness if we try to just elaborate a bit further and say that imagine you had a very confined space mm -hmm. very confined world mm -hmm. perhaps it's only the world of playing chess mm. The only thing you can do is take an action of moving some kind of piece on the board. Nothing else exists. Then um, it's easy to say that the virtual software would be very aware, at least, mm. of all the positions that you have and what actions to take. And you can sense what's happening in the game and you can take actions on it. And you can reason about that and perceive what's happening. Uh, is that still not conscious net? Consciousness, but in a very like confined, like a narrow consciousness. Could you argue that, that there is such a thing? Yeah, I, I could argue argue that consciousness is in different levels. You can be very high consciousness and low consciousness, yeah. and that's also between humans. If you have taking drugs, maybe you are in the lower lower spectrum yes. and so on. Mm. So, so yes, uh, you, you that's a spectra, and if it's in a confined space, vector space, or whatever you have mm -hmm. there, or the only thing that exists is the chess game. Yeah, then it's consciousness in a within, within that field, yeah. I, I would actually say that, you know, similar to what Elon said, real world AI is, perhaps we have real world consciousness. Mm -hmm. And um, today's consciousness or awareness that Elsa has is very narrow, of mm. course. It doesn't understand what the... She can say that this, that this is a glass potentially, but mm. she doesn't really understand what the glass is. Exactly. She doesn't have the background exactly. knowledge of, of that. But that is also programmable. You can do an ontology about the glass and what you can use it for and so on. But if we add now the latest and biggest lang mm. large language models, like exactly. GPT-3 mm. or mm. even greater ones, um, like Gopher or whatnot, that wouldn't, and, and basically you can ask them stuff and they can say something that they, they understand what the difference mm. I understand is a uh, sensitive term, but they at least have a larger, can distinguish. Under, larger mm. understanding mm. in at least they can the distinguish. glass mm. and they, they can distinguish things. Mm. Mm. Yes. And like we get, that. you know, not to human level, of course, mm. but at least to a s stronger level of understanding mm -hmm. of what objects mm. are. Would you agree with that as well? Yeah. So, so we, we can get closer to, yes. you know, it's not human level, mm. perhaps it's some kind of real world consciousness mm. that Tesla mm. cars have, but it's not human level, mm. but it is useful level mm. to at least. It, then, it, then it became hard to tell the difference between awareness yes. and yeah. consciousness. That's why I, I, you're, I you're blurring the line of, uh, I, I like the way we started that there is a difference between awareness and consciousness. Mm -hmm. uh, that makes sense to me. But can you can you have consciousness <laughs> without the conscience? <laughs> <laughs> well, 
at least to me, I, I don't want to go too deep in this, but in, at least for humans, we can very easily differentiate between unconscious and conscious mm, type mm, of actions mm, that we mm. take. At least that's one part of it. And, and we know that we can blink the eye without mm. taking a conscious mm, choice mm. of doing so. But then the eye is potentially aware that something is happening here. It's just, it's not conscious and the consciousness, uh, consciousness aware of it. Mm -hmm. So it's something about, I would argue, and please disagree, but it's something about the type two type of reasoning, mm. this kind of thinking fast and slow, mm. Caymans, mm. Mm. Caymans mm. Uh, kind of thinking. So if you actually have huge amount of background knowledge, understand what things are, you have a good perception of the world, you have a world state, and then you have a type two reasoning system, then you get really close, mm, I mm, would argue, mm. to consciousness. Mm. Would you? Would yeah, you I, I agree in that yeah. as well. Yeah. And, uh, and Elsa doesn't have a type two system. Yet, no, or, no, yeah. no. Uh, okay. And let me, let, nor, nor background let, let, let me break the bubble, but I can mm. actually uh, try to close this. Mm. Why is it important that we understand these differences and, and understanding of this. Why is it quite interesting? When we are talking about these questions, we need to have common ground. So we, we know what we are talking about. And when we are talking with different researchers, you should also know that we are using the same understanding or the same definition of, of, of awareness. And well, I argue there are many levels of usefulness by really getting clear on this. I mean, like, first of all, we have the fundamental of collaborating and working together and making sense of it. Then I argue it has a quite huge impact on the whole field of uh, AI ethics and what is, mm -hmm. uh, you know, mm -hmm. regulations and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So we are regulating the right stuff mm -hmm. and we are understanding what it is we are regulating. It's a little bit like you said, we project feelings it's on like, her, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. This is scary stuff when people are projecting feelings and then that turns into regulation. Mm -hmm. uh, so I argue with several topics, but that, then I think even bigger, if you want to uh, solve more and more uh, sophisticated AI, I think you need to really understand what are the components and capabilities that that builds intelligence mm. or, you know, or build consciousness. There, ergo, you need to break it down into how do we define it? How do we, how do we work on it? You know, if we want to progress in the field. So mm. I think these fundamental questions become very important. And when people dismiss them, dismiss them as some kind of, you know, philosophical exactly. topic yes. that, you know, not worth even mm. discussing. But I think we, we need to have this in the education system yeah, as well. Yeah. Exactly. More philosophy, more right. ethics and so on, both uh, in high school, but also at the university for engineers to, to read at least one course in philosophy.